Welcome back to the channel. So it's been well over a month since my last video and that's because work got pretty busy, which is not a bad problem to have. YouTube as a whole has become something that's gotten a lot easier for me over the past year. When I first started, just breaking out and talking to the camera was pretty nerve wracking, but now that part's second nature. But the actual remembering to film stuff and then to make a video about it, uh, something I'm still trying to work on. So the video that you're about to watch, I actually had like mostly edited and it's been sitting on my computer for the past month. So I'm going to play that and then I've got a bunch of gigs that I got BTS for that'll be in the next video. And then I'll talk about a bigger project that we filmed yesterday in an upcoming video. Enjoy. Welcome back to the channel. So today is a full day working with a agency I've done a couple of gigs with in the past. Uh, and today we are doing some interviews and B-roll for a digital signage company. Nothing overly exciting. It's one of those things where it is what it is. These signs are only about like three by two. They go in windows of small shops, just have like promotional images going through them so it's not anything overly exciting but you know they want to get some interviews and some testimonials so the fx6 is all rigged up today we've got the fx30 as a b cam for our interviews this is actually our second stop of the day the first one went rather quickly we're at a nail salon and it wasn't anything to really show but i'll try to get some behind the scenes going today yeah thank you start that just start it clean from a, from the perspective of marketing investment and then just go into whatever you're going to say. I just want to be able to get it clean. Location number three for the day. Not a bad location at all. This kind of things is just starting to bring more and more people in. And it's great because it's not every customer can we engage when they come in. But all right, so I want to talk through the shoot a little bit more. Not so much the shoot itself. The shoot itself was very simple. We were just getting some B-roll and interviews of these people who had bought this product from this client. We had an on-site producer from the company. They had a shot list in their head. Very simple to work for. I think I maybe worked for like five, four or five hours. Like it was a very easy gig. It was five minutes from my house. What I wanna talk through specifically though is the type of agency this was for. This agency I've done a couple of work for. They've sent me all over the US for some easy industrial shoots, just like gimbal, B-roll, stuff like that. And we built up a good rapport and I'll work for them anytime. But I've worked for similar agencies that I have not had a good experience with. And I wanna give a little bit of a warning. So when I started freelancing last year, my rates were not set. I was pretty much taking any gig I could. I was trying to figure out my rates, what the market around here would allow, et cetera. And so when I was on Production Hub and Staff Me Up, which are great resources, by the way, if you're not already on there, I was, you know, I was taking anything in the Louisville market. And I come across these postings that would need a cam up and gear and lighting for a day rate that they had set. But what I quickly realized is that these agencies aren't agencies in the traditional sense. Me and my friends have coined the term shadow agencies for these. These are companies that market themselves as these global agencies or you know, across the US, multiple locations or something like that. Like if you go and staff me up and you search for a city, you'll see similar ones in multiple cities, even though they don't actually have offices there. What they do is they have an owner and some project managers, and then they freelance everything out regardless of where it is, which in itself, it's not a bad business model. I don't want to lump all of these in the same boat. I will say though, that a lot of these don't understand what it actually takes to get the project done. And the biggest issue is that because they don't actually understand, their rates aren't worth the time. And if there's anything that I've learned over the past year is that you have to value your time. The one that really made me stop and think about doing work with these types of agencies was a shoot that I actually made a vlog on and the shoot itself went great. It was something that I was hired to shoot and edit and the final product I'm proud of, it's on my website, but working with that agency wasn't a great experience. And that's because this project manager or project managers as it was, aren't producers. They don't actually understand what it takes to get from A to B and therefore there was a lot of lost time and there was set rates. And so by the time that I had gotten done with that project, I probably made under half of what I would make if I was direct to client. And it'd be okay if that was a one-off experience, but there's been other shadow agencies that I've done quick gigs for and had similar experiences. So all this to say is just do a little research if you're on Production Hub or something, if you see a posting and you see this agency that says they're global or across the US, just make sure they have like on staff producers or a good track history or something. They're very good about marketing. I will say that, but I can't say that I've had a good experience with most of them. Again, this one that I still do work for, I'll do work for any time because their rates are 
95, 90% of what I would charge in the first place. And normally the gigs are so simple that I don't mind taking that five to 10% cut. And I still get messages from agencies like this saying like, hey, we're this agency, we work all across the US, we'd love to you know, hire you out for our clients in this market. And when I email them back, okay, send me your rate list, I get this message back that says, yeah, sure, here. And it's $300 for the day, 200 for gear. And for me, that's not worth it. And that's an interesting place to be where, yeah, $500 is better than no dollars, but it's also just not worth my time. And maybe I'm just burned from working with ones that really didn't understand the process and were kind of a pain to work with. But now I just won't do work for most of those. And again, I don't want to lump all of these together. There are ones that do understand, that do have good business models. This one that I still do work for is one of those. Just do your research on these types of agencies. If you come across a posting like this, maybe it's worth it for you. For me, most of the time it's not. All right, all that done, let's go do a quick errand. Strange pickup, but picking up a paint bucket lid. All right, so this paint lid is for this rock and roller bag. This goes on the side of my rock and roller. I love my rock and roller. I am looking at maybe getting a bigger cart. It's a little bit easier to push with all the gear on there, but I've had this rock and roller for years and it has served me well. The issue with this bag, and it's like the first thing that you see on any review, is that the plate they put at the bottom is like the thinnest little frisbee ever, and it'll break almost instantly. And in fact, I still have a chunk of it down there, and you can see that just like one hit from a C stand or something completely shatters it, and then it could break the end of the bag. So I saw on one of the reviews that you can go and buy a five gallon bucket lid and put it in the bottom, and it works even better. I think this was like a dollar at Lowe's. And that's an easy enough fix so that I can still use this bag. Perfect fit. Right, this isn't camera related, but I recommend these for anybody who has a TV or a monitor. And that is bias plates. This one specifically is from Medialite. They are a great company. They work with Finder Scientific and things like that. Um, but this is essentially just a high CRI LED strip that you can put on the back of your monitor or TV. And this helps with your perceived contrast and color visibility of the screen that it's attached to. And there it is. All right, so we're packing up for a couple day shoot in North Carolina that we'll be heading up for tomorrow. So this will be with the red Komodo. This is just what we shot the first part of this with and I'm not gonna change it. Although I do love the image out of this. But the fun thing is that this shoot is for social. So I have this rigged up sideways. And so this will be on the tripod, shooting vertical, being able to utilize the full 6K resolution, but in the aspect ratio that it's going to be delivered in. Got two handles on the side for a little push-pull, and then I'll be rigging up the small HD Cine 7 like this to go along with it. A couple of small V-Lock batteries. I've got a bigger one too. And our TC1s for timecode. We'll be running timecode on this and then on the F6 that I'll show here in a little bit. My buddy Austin's coming with me. He'll be running sound along the side, just general assistant. And so he'll be getting all of our sound for this project. Got our filters and our map box. This is just some extra batteries here. And then the nano nucleus is up here. Although I don't know if I'll actually be using it. The last shoot that we did this, I ended up not using it for the most of the time. Been looking for a big soft box and found this newer one on Amazon. I don't remember the exact size, but it's pretty large and the filtration on it's actually really nice and I like the locking mechanism. The one that I had been using for the longest time broke and the locking mechanism on it sucked to begin with. So this has been good for the past two shoots that I've used it on and for the price, it was kind of hard to beat. Got our Flowtech legs in the bag there, bringing the Nanlite 200 and 500 B2 for our interviews, although I'll probably only use the 500, the 200s, just in case we're in a small location. Got the boards for the rock and roller. And then this has all of our audio and power in it. So in here we have the MKH50. Love this mic, been using it for the past like six months or so. And for the price, I think it might be one of the best interior shotgun mics that you can buy. Some 25 foot rollable stingers, XLR cables, C-stand accessories, the F6, and then we have our Deity Slate, mostly because it looks cool and clients love it. I'm not gonna lie, that's half the reason that I picked it up. Sometimes perception is everything. 
this will be our audio for the interviews. So this is the Deity Theo set. This is two mics, and then I also have the PR2 in here that I talked about in the last video. I know we're going to be doing some walk and talk, and I don't know what the situation is going to be with RF, so we might actually end up using this on this shoot. And then this one has all of our lavaliers in it. Alongside the mics in here, we've got some medical tape alongside some moleskin and some stickies and stuff like that. So multiple different ways to lav them up depending on what they're wearing. Hopefully I can just use the bumblebee and some medical tape or maybe make a moleskin sandwich. In addition to the audio, we've got this K-Tech arm with the right angle adapter. I love having that right angle adapter. Once you put it up on a C-stand, being able to just have that drop straight down makes cable management very easy. So that's mostly everything that we're taking. I'm gonna actually try to take as little of this as possible into the facility, mostly just because we don't know where we're gonna be. And last time we rigged all this up on the rock and roller and ended up having to carry it around for way too long. So just trying to save our backs on that. All right, thanks, Pastor Josh. For some reason, I didn't record an outro back then. So here's my outro now. I'm gonna wrap this video up. Till the next video.